Since I decided to go more low power with my home lab stuff, I decided to get a much smaller rack. I've been using this gigantic Sysrax fully enclosed rack that's uh, 15U and it's impossible to clean so it's super dusty and I <laughs> started throwing away all the panels. I'm just going to throw the whole thing away. I bought a much smaller open frame rack. It's 12U and it just takes up way less space. It's not nearly as deep. I've been transferring my stuff to new cases. Right now I just have two servers really plus a little mini PC that I run my router stuff on. So I've replaced the two Rosewell cases. Uh, this one is for my Plex server. This is the Sliger CX3150X. They make a bunch of different models. They're all basically the same. They just kind of trade out different drive options. So this particular one has mounting for two and a half and three and a half inch drives. Most of them have 360 millimeter radiator support. This one has 240, so you lose one fan worth of cooling. It's not the end of the world. It, this is a very low power system, even though it has a relatively high power CPU in it. It's a 12700K. It's not really stressed that much. It's basically using quick sync for everything. It very rarely is like chugging on all the cores. I was originally going to get the for you case because I have a 3060 that was doing all the video transcoding. After I ordered the 4U case, Plex released a beta version that enables proper Intel QuickSync support under Windows. So I was able to drop the video card and now I can go for the smaller case. This can still hold a full height PCI Express card, but my particular video card was a bit too high, so I wouldn't have been able to use it. I was able to save one U of space by going down to this 3U one. Shout out to Hunter at Sliger because I emailed them like a week after I ordered the 4U case. I said, hey, uh, I changed my mind. Can I switch cases? And he was actually able to go down to the shipping department and stop it just before it went out. That was pretty cool. They were able to fix that. So I ended up with this nice blue case. Great quality. I mean, I really like it. Nice, solid buttons. Good, uh, thick metal. Really no complaints. It's already dusty because I've been <laughs> running my Plex server in it. Uh, this system actually only pulls about 30 watts idle. I could actually go down to 2U, but the problem with going down to 2U is then you're stuck with Flex ATX power supplies. They are in the future going to offer a 2U case that has an SFX power supply. So I'm waiting for that. I'll probably move my capture PC over to that and just have another 2U worth of computers into my uh, rack to free up some more space in the rest of my uh, small office. But in the meantime, I just got the 3U one. This also has more hard drive options and stuff in case I need to repurpose this case in the future or put some kind of storage on it other than the M.2 drives that are already in it. So funny story, I ordered this case with the rails and they actually forgot to ship it to me. I got the server case, but no rails. I also ordered the other case that I'm going to show in a second, which is the HL15 from 45 Home Lab. I also ordered that with Rails. They also forgot to ship Rails. So two separate companies both forgot Rails, which was really funny. Unfortunately, my Sliger Rails, you can hear the clicking. They somehow got a dent right here maybe even during manufacturing, there's a dent right here in the rail, so it kind of clicks past it. I don't know, it'll probably work fine, but just funny that both two completely unrelated companies both forgot my rails right away, no issues. I just emailed their customer support. Hunter took care of me with Sliger and someone else took care of me on uh, 45 Home Lab. So that was no problem, but it was just funny that they both did the exact same thing. Here's the inside of the Plex server. It's just a SFX power supply. My motherboard, the AIO that I ordered from them, it's an unbranded uh, Ace Attack cooler. Seems to work fine, and I've got a bunch of M.2 and a 10 gig networking card in it. Really nice case design. I like how you can separate, like the motherboard tray kind of comes out, and you know, it's not something I really need to do. It's a pretty easy build. This isn't a full case review, but my feedback to them would be, I don't like the fact that they put the locking screws at the back for the top, because when you pull out the case on your rails, you can't get to the screws. So you have to like get behind the server first and get the lid off. So it's kind of annoying. Uh, what I'd like to see is what Rosewill does, although they don't implement it perfectly either, is to have the same like push forward latching mechanism, but have the screws here. 
you just put them at the front and have like a countersunk screw here. That way when it's extended, you can unscrew the two screws and remove the lid without having to get behind the server because you don't necessarily have room. You know, this can often just come right out and be lined up with the rest of your rack and you can't get to anything here. Because I just recently got the HL15 as well. Oh boy, was I spoiled by the rails that come with the HL15. I've never had real server rails. <laughs> the ones I had before were all from like Rosewill and stuff and they were like 30 dollar rails the slagger ones are a bit nicer than that they're still you know relatively low end rails oh my god the super micro rails <laughs> these are works of art not only are they super chunky but they're like really nice to adjust and <laughs> they're great i mean yeah they're like three times as much as the slagger ones what i would like to see is that they put mounting holes for both types because i would like to just go buy a set of super micro rails or they could even offer them 45 home lab offers them with the uh hl 15 as just an option they just send you the super micro rails you can also buy these just separately from super micro they're like they're not cheap they're like 140 bucks or something they are really nice so it would be great if you could just have mounting screws or holes on the side for these ones too. give people options because i know there's been problems with the rails that come with these i haven't even tried mounting them yet so who knows i may have problems with them too but uh there have been reports of people running into issues where the rails just don't fit in their their rack giving the option for some like really nice ones <laughs> would be uh, a nice touch because i don't think i can go back to other rails after these my other minor concern with this is that there's not really any cooling on the hard drives. Due to their positioning, there's barely anything for a vent at the front. Really, they're just in this enclosed space that doesn't have any airflow. If you have three, three and a half inch drives, they are gonna cook. If they maintained the same vents at the front and had the same cutouts, I think what you could do is just maybe move it forward like 15 millimeters so you can put in a thin 120 fan and that would be fine for hard drives. I'd like to see a little bit better cooling on that because you're already just limited to two 120 millimeter fans going through a rad. But overall, I really like the case. I mean, most of my complaints are just nitpicks and kind of like tweaks for like a version two. Overall, really nice. They're not cheap. They're you know, in the $300 range. My initial plan was to continue using the Rosewill RSV4500U that I've been using for a long time as a NAS. I was able to put 15 drives in that. I use 15 drives, so when they made the HL15, I really looked at it, but I was like, that thing is insanely expensive. So I didn't buy it. Although I think they did offer a discount if you pre-ordered it, which I now kind of regret because I ended up buying it. The main reason for me switching is that I've been having constant problems with drives disconnecting. It's been bad cables, it's been weird power supply issues, it's been bad adapters. Basically I would get my NAS running and then after a month or two just randomly it would just go oh yeah three drives are offline or one drive is throwing right errors or and they're all the drives are fine. It's just weird connection issues because when you don't have a big back plane or anything Thing and you're just wiring up all the individual drives, it's so easy for there to be problems. So I replaced my HBA, I replaced all the cables, I replaced power supply adapters, I eventually placed, replaced the power supply. And it was just like constant. It was just like, it would work for a month or two and then something weird would happen. So I finally bit the bullet and bought the very expensive HL15, uh, which, you know, it's really expensive, but oh man, is this case beautiful. <laughs> It is so nice. I do feel kind of bad for scratching it already while I was replacing the fans. It's me, what are you gonna do? This holds 15 drives as well, but the main difference is that it has a proper back plane. So you just slot in the drives and it just works. Cabling is much simpler. There are four cables to the HBA, four Molex connectors instead of 15 SATA power cables. It just simplifies everything. It makes it a lot more reliable and it's been reliable since I got this. The only thing I changed on it was I swapped out the fans, which are fine. Like they're not terrible fans. They're made by Top Motor. They're just loud and they're not speed controlled, um, at least out of the box. They're wired into a back 
uh, power distribution board. They're all three pin instead of PWM. I just pulled them out and swapped out the fans. I don't think you really need to if you don't mind the noise, but I can tell you when this thing's running and it's it's winter now, so it's not super hot in my room, you barely even hear it. I run them at like 60 to 70% PWM speed and there's six. These are 120 millimeter knock to a 2000 RPM models, the industrial ones. Hard drives galore, full size ATX board, full size ATX power supply, huge knock to a cooler, big rat's nest right here, but that's okay. There's nothing that needs to be cooled right here, so it doesn't matter. Six fans, you've got the mid plane and the uh, front fans, so there's six total uh, knock to is in here. No other fans other than the CPU, and I did actually put on a little fan onto my uh, 25 gig NIC, just because it's at the farthest slot, and it doesn't really get much airflow there, or at least not enough for me to be comfortable with it. I upgraded to a 9305 16i, which is a pretty high-end HBA and they're pretty expensive. I had so many problems. I just wanted to get away from the 9200 series, just trying to eliminate things. I'm like, maybe I just need the newer model chipset. Maybe it'll have more reliable connections or something. So I was desperate. Uh, yeah, the motherboard and everything's the same as the last video where it's still uh, 14600K. And I've got a couple SSDs for boot drives. This system runs Proxmox and then on top of Proxmox, I run TrueNAS Core, but I'm gonna switch to scale seeing as they have killed off true nas core it will no longer get updates so uh well after the next major uh update so I'm, I'm gonna switch to scale at some point i guess and i've got my corsair commander over here handling all the fans i like that because you can just control it through proxmox with uh just through the terminal and you can just set a fixed percentage for every fan so i just have these set to one speed and that set to another one and then i have the two independently controlled sets of three somewhat of a rat's nest in there it's still more than enough airflow so i get why <laughs> It's super duper expensive. I mean, this thing is almost a thousand dollars with rails. It really feels like the type of case that I'm going to have for a long time. I was running this Seasonic for a, a long time, this 850 watt titanium. With the weird power issues and stuff, I switched it to a fractal design. I really like the fractal design ion power supplies. I've basically tried to standardize to those. Unfortunately, they I don't think they make a SFX one because I keep having to buy the Corsair ones. I'd like to be able to switch to them for everything, just for keeping the cabling the same and everything. This one, I'm not sure if it's actually broken or not. As for storage, I have eight 18 terabyte drives and seven 14 terabyte drives. The 18s are all of my backup, and this is like my main array of the 14s, which are like my Plex server, mostly my Plex server, and just general files and stuff. So this mirrors over to this all the time. It replicates over, and then I also replicate to my dad's place, which has a six bay NAS, so I can replicate select stuff over to that. I can't really think of anything that I'm like nitpicky about other than the fans coming stock where they're just kind of three pin fans and they're 100 all the time i get that in a server i you know it's perfectly normal to run fans at full power all the time in a server but again since you're gearing this towards home use it kind of makes sense that you'd have something that like an option for fan speed control simply because most people are using it in their homes if it's a home lab you kind of want it a bit quieter usually yeah these noctuas work really well for that but yeah, you're paying for them because you need six of them. Uh, I had to 3D print a little bracket here for the uh, SSDs. They do sell a bracket, but you can just 3D print one. And there's another design that's available where it comes out this way. And if you have a smaller cooler, that would work and give you better airflow on the SSDs. But this one, uh, just because of the bigger cooler I have, you're kind of stuck going this way. And continuing my tradition of using blue Sabrent cables, because I've run into problems with SATA cables, especially the ones that just like come with motherboards where they're just like, really cheap and they just start throwing errors especially in TrueNAS it's really picky about drives like disconnecting or any kind of uh, connection issues I've just been buying these like fairly good quality um, Sabrent cables and I just slowly replace all the SATA cables that I have with these and I get them in blue because motherboards always ship with black ones so I know that I'm upgrading them each time this case is also a lot shorter depth than the Rosewell one so I'm able to adjust my server rack the open frame rack that I've got to its smallest size because I just don't need the depth. So that's also good because it's, it's going to go under a table. So it just kind of works out that way. 